Hello and welcome back to another video on the Demystifying Medicine channel. Today's video is made for the staff at the Mental Health and Addiction Program of St. Joseph's Healthcare Hamilton, but the content cover can be found useful for all audiences. Now let's dive into the topic of concurrent disorders and the importance of assessment. To start off, you may be wondering what are concurrent disorders. Concurrent disorders, also known as dual diagnosis, refer to the co-occurrence of mental health illnesses and substance use disorders. According to the 2012 Statistics Canada survey, about 282,000 adult Canadians aged 15 to 64 had experienced both a mood or anxiety disorder and a substance use disorder in the previous year. Studies show that patients with concurrent disorders are likely to suffer more severe physical and psychological distress than do people with a single disorder. The two co-occurring disorders can be active at the same time or at various times. The intensity and form of the concurrent disorder symptoms can also change over time and they can range from moderate to severe. Now that we are more familiar with the term concurrent disorders, let's dive into the relationship between addiction and mental health. Addiction and mental health problems are related to each other in a variety of ways. For example, substance use could trigger brain structure and function changes that make a person more likely to develop a mental disorder. On the other hand, some studies have found that individuals with a mental illness such as depression or PTSD may decide to rely on drugs as a form of self-medication. But, substance use typically makes the symptoms severe over time. Alternatively, mutual risk factors such as family trauma or genetics can contribute to both substance use disorders and other mental disorders. Moving on to manifestation. How concurrent disorders manifest depends on the combination of disorders at hand. Since concurrent disorders are made up of different combinations, symptoms can vary and it is not the same for all of the combinations. The combinations of concurrent disorders can be divided into five main groups. The first group consists of substance use and mood and anxiety disorders such as depression or panic disorder. The second group includes substance use and severe and persistent mental health disorders such as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. The third category is comprised of substance use and personality disorders such as borderline personality disorder or problems related to anger, impulsivity, or aggression. The fourth group is a combination of substance use and eating disorders, such as anorexia nervosa or bulimia. And lastly, the fifth group can include other substance use and mental health disorders, such as gambling and sexual disorders. Upon this manifestation, many therapeutic approaches can be taken to tackle concurrent disorders. However, Therapy in cases with a concurrent disorder may take longer and be more difficult since these individuals often suffer from more severe medical, social, and emotional complications compared to patients with singular disorders. The preferred treatment method for concurrent disorders varies depending on the type and severity of the patient's problems. Potential therapeutic options include psychosocial treatments such as individual or group therapy sessions as well as pharmaceutical interventions or more often than not, both. It is extremely important to assess for concurrent disorders because they can create deteriorating cycles and lead to poor treatment outcomes such as a high chance of relapse if the disorders are not addressed simultaneously. Therefore, the treatment plan should consider both mental health and substance use disorders. In fact, clients usually have the best success when both problems are addressed at the same time in a coordinated way. In other cases, it is best to treat one problem first. 
For example, research shows that patients who have concurrent mood and alcohol disorders are more likely to show a better recovery if the addiction is addressed first. As a result, healthcare providers should use assessment tools to reduce the chances of misdiagnosis due to overlapping symptoms and ultimately set up better treatment plans. One such assessment tool is the comprehensive assessment. This is a process where both mental health and addiction issues are assessed simultaneously and in the context of each other. It involves following the interactions between disorders over time. These interactions are not always linear cause and effect, but are dynamic, fluid, and change over time. The benefits of such comprehensive assessment include improved client outcomes, a better match to appropriate treatment, improved client satisfaction, and earlier intervention. Finally, conducting comprehensive assessments will reduce the length of hospital stays and readmission rates and eventually decrease the burden of extra healthcare costs. That concludes our video. We hope you learned something new about concurrent disorders and the importance of their assessment. All the sources used in the making of this video has been linked below for your kind review. Some extra helpful resources have also been highlighted in case you would like to learn more. We hope you enjoyed and see you next time!